It's a sword cane, see? Calhoun used it when he killed his wife, right where you're standing. Alec, you... you killed Fanny. Exactly. And now you're going to kill me? Yes. No, no, no. Keep away from me. I'm sorry. Keep away! Help! I did. Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fear is the strongest, and our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight, when the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute in The House Where Death Lived. <laughs> Now, Murder at Midnight, Tales of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story is a ghostly nightmare by one of Radio's best-known mystery writers, Robert Newman. It's titled, The House Where Death Lived. large rambling house on top of a hill. A house whose windows are either shuttered or broken. A rusty iron fence surrounds it. And its grounds are waste and uncared for. A car grinds slowly up the hill, stops before the main gate, and two men get out. One of them is gray-haired but vigorous. The other wears a chauffeur's uniform. They push open the heavy gate, start up the gravel path. Quite a joint. You could hardly expect it to be a show place after being empty for more than ten years. It's open. Yes. I'm glad we didn't have to force it. All right, Sanders. You can go back to the car and wait for me. I should be out in about a half an hour or so. You mean you're going in alone? Why, oh, Yes. Somehow, I don't think you're exactly suited by temperament for psychic research. Okay, Doc, I'll be waiting for you back in the car. Right. Now, let's see. I suppose the best place to start would be... Good evening. What? Oh, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. I hope I haven't made a mistake. This is the Calhoun house, isn't it? Oh, yes. This is very embarrassing. I was down to see the trustees just this morning. They gave me permission to go through the place and told me that there was no one living here, that no one had lived here for many years. <laughs> As you can see, that's not quite true. Not that it matters. I lead a rather lonely life, and I'm very glad you came. I'd be more than happy to show you around. Well, you're very kind. Uh, my name is Goff, Dr. Alexander Goff. Dr. Goff. For the past few years, I've been specializing in psychic research. Oh, yes. Have you heard of me? Yeah, I'm sorry, no. But I do know that scientists, specialists in psychical research, have been interested in the house for many years. There have been several books written about it. I read about it in the series of studies that Kinsey did. He said it was one of the most fertile fields for manifestations he'd ever come across. It has a long history of apparitions and hauntings. That's very true. And now, would you like to look around? I'd like it very much. Very well. I imagine the best place to begin is with uh, the cellar. This way. The cellar. That's where Mrs. Calhoun was killed, wasn't it? Yes. Huh? I keep the door locked now for that uh, and for several other reasons. May I? Hey, no, no, wait. Wait, don't try to go down. Uh, have you a match? Why? Yes. There. There aren't any stairs. Exactly. That's how Mrs. Calhoun was killed. The stairs had become rotten and Calhoun took them out, uh, put in that ladder. Mrs. Calhoun didn't know it. She tried to go down, fell, and broke her neck. Uh, but she wasn't just killed. She was 
murdered, wasn't she? Well, that's hard to say. I don't think even Calhoun could tell you whether it was deliberate or not. For a long time, people didn't even suspect what had happened. They thought that she'd run away and disappeared. However, after she was killed, Calhoun buried her down there in the cellar. Uh, you see, over there, that, that near that big flagstone. Hmm. Oh, I see. Uh, well, uh, after that, there was something about a gardener, wasn't there? Yes, yes, Burroughs. Uh, he had helped Calhoun take out the stairs. Considerably later, he was working in the cellar and found some bones, and he put two and two together and... and... went to the police. No, no, he did a lot better than that from his own point of view. Shall we go back into the parlor? Oh, yes, of course. I'll just shut this door again. There. Burroughs began blackmailing Calhoun. And Calhoun paid for a while, and then one day he called Burroughs in here, into the parlor. He was sitting over there at that desk. He had his cane with him. The cane that's on the desk there now. You can look at it if you like. Thank you. I would like to look at it. Twist the handle and pull on it. A sword cane? Yes. He killed Burroughs right here in this room. That stain on the carpet, there is his blood. This time he didn't even try to get away with it. He called in the police and he was tried and sent to an institution. Yes, but that's what I don't understand. If Calhoun had committed two murders, why wasn't he sent to jail or hanged? Because no one knew whether he was sane or not. Matter of fact, I don't think Calhoun knew himself. You see, when they asked him why he had killed his wife and Burroughs, he said he had to, uh, that, that he'd been told to. Told to? By whom? Well, he wasn't sure, by, by voices. He said they told him that they lived here in this house before him, that they had killed, and that he would have to kill too. Oh, excellent, excellent. Just what I've been looking for, and what I've hoped for. A house with a... A tradition of hauntings, for each generation is affected by that tradition and adds to it. Oh, oh, what? What's wrong? They, they've come for me. They're weighing me down, dragging what? me back. They? Who? Oh, oh you're ill. Here, let me help you. No, it's, it's no use. You, you can't pick me up. It's too much on my hands. Uh, on my hands. Is he? He's there, right there on the floor. I tried to pick him up and put him on the couch, but I couldn't lift him. Now he's gone. Well, oh, now look, Doc, if he fell down, if he was as weak as you said it. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, what did he look like? Well, he was quite old, about 70, and very tall and thin. He had white hair and a white goatee. Holy smokes. What's the matter? Well, I was waiting outside for you. The guy that lives just down the hill came by and we, we kind of talked a little. Yes. I told him you were inside here and you described Calhoun to me, the guy that used to live here. And the old gent you say you spoke to sounds just like him. But it couldn't have been. Calhoun is still in an institution. No, he's not. At least not exactly. That's how this guy happened to talk about it. You see, he just read in the paper that Calhoun had died yesterday. Sanders, yeah? That was Calhoun's ghost. Oh, now, look, It God. was, I tell you. It has to be. This is what I've been looking for for years. An apparition that manifests itself without a medium or any apparatus. It's exactly what I need for the last chapter of my book. And I'm going to stay here until he appears again. Calhoun! Calhoun! Where are you? Why don't you come back? I'm waiting for you! Oh, it's no use. Two days now and not a sign of him. Maybe Sanders was right. Maybe I did imagine the whole thing. Either that... Wait a minute. He didn't die here. He died at the asylum. He lived here all his life. Committed two murders here. Perhaps the aura, the forces here, were strong enough to evoke him once, but not to bring him back again. His wife and the gardener, they did die here. 
I could establish contact, I might be able to evoke them. Or else, or else if someone else died here, someone I knew, someone that knew me. Calhoun! Is that right? Is that what I have to do? What? Who's there? Me, Doc. Andy. Oh. Just a second. Oh, what a night. Blow like all get up. What do you want, Sanders? Well, the missus thought you she'd get a little worried about you. Thought you might be running low on food. Oh, no, I still have plenty. I haven't been eating much. Uh, any luck? No, he hasn't materialized again, but I'm sure he will. I know he will. If someone else died here, huh? someone you knew, and someone that knew me. What's the matter, Doc? And hey, why are you staring at me that way? Doc! Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Sanders. Sanders, I was just thinking that if you stayed here with me, it might help. But I thought you said I was all wrong for this kind of stuff. You know I don't believe in ghosts, anything like that. Well, I did say that, Sanders, but... Oh, this place is different. It's... This is such a powerful, fertile field for psychic manifestations that I think if you did stay, we could cure your skepticism permanently. Yeah? How? Oh. Well, this is such a perfect night for an evocation. I don't hear anything. Just a storm. It's hard. There it is again! It... It's down in the cellar! Where's that? It's back there! Where? Go ahead, run! You're quicker than I am, Sanders! Run! Hurry! Okay, but I still don't hear anything. I'm... A man with an obsession in a haunted house. A man with a corpse on his hands as the clock strikes twelve for... Murder! At midnight! And now, to continue with our story. Just a moment later, Dr. Goff is still standing by the open cellar door. Lighting a candle, he peers down to where Sanders' body lies huddled on the flagstones below. Sanders? Sanders? two places. I'm sorry, Sanders. Very sorry. But science is a hard mistress. I've been working on my book for seven years. This is the first chance I've had to make detailed and objective observations on a specific set of phenomena. When Calhoun didn't materialize again. I'm sure you understand. The only problem now is the police. You have to be very uncompromising about something like this. Only some way. I can. I know. The car. It's quite late. The storm blowing. There's not likely to be anyone around. Yeah, but, oh, come on, Sanders. You and I are going to take a little trip. before you came in, so it's headed downhill. That's splendid. Very considerate. Now, open the door and put you in. 
Oh, up. up. Uh, make sure you don't fall sideways. You stay behind the wheel. And. Uh, is there anything else? Anything I forgot? I don't think so. Let's take the brake off. Shut the door. And wait. There's no telling how far she'll go, especially with the streets so bumpy. I only hope that she'll go far enough to pick up plenty of speed, so that when she does, ah, ah, she's Swinging, swinging to the right. Yeah. And now I wait. Sanders. Sanders, where are you? It's been four or five days now. Why haven't you come back? What it to him? Haven't you been able to find a way? This is where you died, remember? Or down here in the cellar. Are you down there? Sanders? Are you down there? No. Not down there. Not anywhere. Say, yes? Well, who's that? Who's there? What do you want, Gene? Just a second. Alec. Oh, I'm so glad to see you, dear. I asked you, what do you want? Why did you come here? Why? It's been almost a week now since you've been home. Have you any idea how worried I've been? You didn't even phone me after Sanders was killed. I'm sorry, I just never thought of phoning her. I had other things on my mind. How did it happen, Alex? You read the verdict of the inquest. He probably fell asleep at the wheel waiting for me. The brakes slip, the car rolled down the hill, and crash. Poor Sanders. Somehow I can't help feeling. Feeling what? I. I don't know. Perhaps it's this horrible old house. It, everything about it is just plain evil. Oh, Alec, why don't you give it all up? Give what up? This obsession of yours. You started writing your book, doing psychical research to prove that there were no such things as apparitions or ghosts. Suppose and now... I found out that I was wrong. What? Yes, what would you say if I told you that I'd already seen one apparition here and that I was expecting to see another one? Alec, oh no. Oh, yes. Gee, the first evening I came here, I saw Calhoun. I talked to him. He showed me around the house. And later on, I discovered that he had died the day before. I waited for him to come back again, but he never did. And I finally realized why. He couldn't come back because he hadn't died here. He had died at the sanitarium. Now, I'm waiting for Sanders to come back. Sanders? But, but he didn't die here either. He died? Yes, Gene. I... I don't like it here, Alec. I'm afraid. I, I'm going. No, Jean. Don't go. You can help me. Huh? Come on in here. To the parlor. But, but, Alec. Come on, Jean. Later I'll tell you a very interesting story about this room, about something that happened here a long time ago. But I... All right, Alec. That's a good girl. You know, Jean, I've just realized I've been very stupid. Calvin couldn't come back again because he didn't die. Sanders did die here, but he wasn't buried here. And now I'm beginning to think that a spirit can only materialize in the place where its body is. But, but what's that got to do with me? Dear, does anyone know that you came here tonight? Why, why no, but... Good. What do you mean, and what are you doing with that cane? You remember I said I was going to tell you a story about something that had happened here in this room? Well, this cane played an important part in it. 
see, it's not just an ordinary cane. This is a sword cane. It's what Calhoun used when he killed his wife, right where you're standing. Alec, you, you killed Anders. Exactly. And now you're going to kill me. Yes, dear. I am going to kill you, and I'm going to bury you right here, down in the cellar where Calhoun buried his wife. Then at least you will be able to come back. No, no, try and run away. Come on, you. See, I locked the door. No, no, no. Keep away from me. I'm sorry. Keep away. My Help! Dear. Very nice indeed. You didn't do quite as neat a job as I did, but you did. You did cow food. Yes, Doctor. You're dead. But you did come back. Yes, I came back to tell you how grateful I am to you. Grateful? For, for what? For having, shall we say, relieved me. You see, there's a curse on this house. When I was alive and lived here, even before I killed my wife and Burroughs, I saw the ghosts of those who had died before I was born. It was they who made me kill, because once I did kill, they were free. I don't understand. Don't you? As long as this house stands, someone must haunt it. Until I died, it was haunted by those whom I had killed. When I died, it became my job. I thought it would be years before I could find someone to take my place, and then you came along. You mean... Yes, Doctor, yes, the curse, the evil that was spawned here has been passed on to you. Now it's haunted by those whom you killed, and I am free and can rest in peace. But you, you must stay here and live with the evil you created until you die. No, 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 I, I won't stay. Yes, you will, Doctor. Oh, I didn't believe it either. I thought I could leave whenever I wanted to, but I found that I couldn't. I had to stay until they took me away. When you try to leave, we'll find out why. But, yeah, but I won't stay. I, I, I tell you, I won't. Neither you nor they can make me stay. Nothing can make me stay. No. No. <laughs> Once more, you're right about this place. It is evil. But I'm not going to let that evil continue. It must be destroyed, along with every stick and stone in this house. And just how do you propose to do that? I'll show you. Fire! This can of kerosene! Oh, that no. pile of lumber there! <laughs> it won't do any good, take my word for it. <laughs> no, you watch! There! The whole cellar, the whole house will go now! Yes, yes, Doctor, but you won't go. I won't! You watch me! But you can't go without me, Doc. What? Don't you remember? You carried me out to the car. You've got to take me with you. Sander. Yes, Doctor, your chauffeur. Let go of me, Sanders. Let go. I, I can't take you with me. I... And you've got to take me too, Alex. No, Jane. No. Let, let go. Both of you. You see, go. now you know why I couldn't go either. Let go. What dragged me back and weighed me oh, down. Please. Now you know why you're going to have to stay here. I won't stay. I tell you, I won't. Not even if I have to take both Sanders and Jean with me. I'm afraid that won't do any good, Doctor. You see, the ladder isn't very strong. No! Oh. It broke. It broke. I'm trapped here. Goodbye, Doctor. If you don't mind, I'll leave you now for good. No! Oh. draw higher and higher as Dr. Goff screams and staggers backward. Far away, a bell starts tolling for murder at
to be with us again when death stretches out his bony hand and the clocks strike twelve for murder at midnight. The part of Dr. Goff was played by Barry Kroger. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leder. She's got to die. Betty. I say yes. Here, I'll hold her arm. All right, Betty. But... No, 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 don't. I don't want to die. I'm... Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest. And our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight. When the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute in Nightmare. of Mystery and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by Joseph Ruskall is one of the most terrifying and fantastic nightmares we've ever heard. Its title, Nightmare. husband in the world. Then why? Oh, Ernie, now please don't look so hurt. Now I can't even look hurt. I just murdered my wife in her sleep, didn't I? No, you were just about to. I mean... I... Oh, no, what the... Everything's happening tonight. <laughs> Hello. 
What? Who? Wrong number. And what's more, this is a heck of a time to be ringing. Why, what a nerve. Night. But maybe that was the police you phoned in your dream. Now, now will you go to sleep? Ernie Kraft, I'm sure I didn't mean to insinuate anything. I was just telling you my dream. You asked, didn't you? Oh, you're a character. I guess I'll have to put you in that book I never wrote, too. <gasps> Was in it too? Huh? That book you never wrote. You nagged about it so much, no wonder. Oh, and that look when you bent over me like a madman. Oh. Ernie, what on earth do you suppose made me have a nightmare? That's easy. You would insist on eating hamburgers after the show tonight. Yes, I did, didn't I? When we got out of the movies. Hamburgers and coffee. Ernie, they were part of my dream too. Hamburgers. Oh. Ernie, stop punching on that pillow, please. All right, all right. Go ahead, then. Better tell me your dream, all of it. Neither of us will sleep until you do. I'll just light this butt. Now, oh, what's happened? Gruesome details. Well, I don't know if I can remember now. It was all so hazy and terrifying. Well, what happened before I smothered you with a pillow? A crazy quilt. Something about your job and... I was a millstone around your neck, and hamburgers, and you hated me, and July 15th... July 15th? Yes, I can't imagine what that meant. Look, look, start at the start. Why did I decide to murder you? Because of that other woman, your secret love. Huh? You promised her you'd kill me tonight when I was asleep. My secret love? Yes, she had you in her spell. <laughs> That's kind of bad casting, isn't it, Butch? I'm the dish, dishes and dustpan type, remember? In the five years we've been married, have I ever looked I at know, another... I know, I know. I told you it was a crazy dream. Maybe you want me to eliminate my one night a week out, too. My Saturday gin rummy with the boys. Oh, no. Uh, who was my secret love? Did she uh, have a face? <laughs> well, this is the silliest part of it, Ernie. It's absolutely ridiculous. It was that girl, Betty Daniel. Betty Daniel? <laughs> Who's she? You remember that tall, dark-haired artist I introduced you to at Cape Cod last summer? Cape At the exhibition. No, I don't... Oh, wait a minute. Trousers, <laughs> long cigarette holder, yeah. very intense. Yes, very intense. But what the devil... What was she doing in your dream? We said hello to her, we walked off, and that was that. Uh, yes, yes, I know. I hardly remember her myself. I can't imagine why I dreamt of her. Why? No, no, don't. no, don't touch me. Don't. No. Oh, that dream. That awful dream. So crazy. And yet it seemed to be telling me something, warning me. Strange and weird. You know how dreams are. First thing I remember is Provincetown and us looking at the art exhibition just the way we did last summer. Only now the picture was about ten feet tall and hanging crooked. And then she came along... Betty Daniels, just the way she did there. Hello, Helen. And I introduced you the same as I did then, only not exactly the same. Like in a dream. You know, silly. Betty Daniels, this is my husband, Ernest. He is very faithful to me. How do you do? How do you do? We've never met. That's a marvelous Gloria painting, Helen, don't you think, or... Do you prefer hamburgers? Well, I... My wife prefers hamburgers, Miss Daniel. Oh. Oh, I didn't know. Only after a movie, though. Anyway, I'm sure I can't tell one painting from another. My husband's the art lover in the family, I guess. And I just tag along for the fish. Only I don't like fish. I like hamburgers. I know. You don't wear trousers like I do. You're... fluffy. Betty and I met on the beach journey. She's a painter. Our rowboats got tangled. That's how we met. Yes, it was all very casual. I hardly remember. Well... Ernie and I are going back to New York today. Isn't that a shame? I wish you two wouldn't stare at each other so. Well, we better run along, Helen. Lots of packing to do. Ernie has got to get back to his silly old job. He's a reporter. A reporter? Shouldn't he write a book he never wrote? Well, imagine. That's what he always says. Well, goodbye. I'm wondering why I'm thinking of you now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. The scenes sort of dissolve into each other. Like a kind of dream movie. And I'm trembling with fright because I have a feeling I know how the plot's going to end. 
The next thing I remember, Ernie, I'm in a penthouse apartment on Park Avenue. Everything zigzag, even the butler. And I'm the maid, Helen, there. And what I'm doing is turning pages for Betty Daniels while she plays the piano for you, Ernie. Isn't that crazy? Neither of you hardly notice me at all. And I keep trying to open my mouth. Uh, 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 like that. But it's stuck. And I'm absolutely frozen at what I overhear. Darling. Yes, Bruce. Love our loveness. Out of this world. Ah, this is heaven. Ernie, do you ever call your wife Butch? Never. What gave you that idea? I hate the very sight of her. She's really a little ignoramus. You're telling me she prefers hamburgers. Ernie, do you think she suspects yet? Of course not. She thinks I'm at a gin rummy game. Darling, you're blind, but she's not. She knows. She knows? How'd she find out? You may go, Helen. Helen, do you hear me? Why don't you go? Answer me. Have you lost her tongue? Oh, well, there's murder in the air. How'd she find out, Betty? Tell me. Darling, do you suppose she doesn't know what happened last summer in Provincetown? After we all said goodbye, you came to look for your cigarette lighter. She knew you hadn't lost your lighter, that you'd come back to ask me for my New York telephone number. Uh, 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 she knew? Of course, intuition. She knows we've been having a secret affair ever since. Uh, 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 I can't go on like this. I'm tired of being just a gin rummy excuse. Ernie, if you love me, you'll, you'll do what I promised. But I pity her so. Don't be a fool. Isn't it her fault you never wrote that book you never wrote? It's true. She wouldn't let me give up my job. She's a millstone around my uh, neck. Uh, and get rid of her, Ernie. Get rid of her and I'll bring your genius to the world. I have plenty of money, and you can you can give up reporting and write that book. Fulfill your destiny. Fulfill my destiny. Oh, Betty, you'll help me. Yes. But only if you forget July 15th. You forget about July 15th. It won't mean a thing to you from now on. Not a thing. I promise you. And you'll do away with it. The way I told you. Yes. Like you told me. The pillow. The pillow. Uh, 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 Shh, uh, don't let her hear. Just look at her standing there at the piano. You've been spying on us, Helen, haven't you? Haven't you? Answer, have you lost your tongue? Oh, don't try to fool us. We know you're the real Helen and, and not the maid. She's heard everything you said, Ernie. So we'll have to kill her now. Unless, unless she gives me a divorce. Will you give him a divorce? Answer or we'll finish you right now. Very well. Here's the pillow, Ernie. Right now. I'll hold her on. Answer, Helen. Don't make me do it. Answer, Helen. I pity you, but I hate you. Let her cry. Look at me. Stricken dumb. Her mouth is moving, but she's not saying anything. What are you trying to say? Helen, please don't make me do it. Will you give me a divorce? Tell me. Tell me. Uh, Ernie. Uh, Ernie, stop. Fools we are. Do you want her body found here? Fine for it. She's got to die. She's got to. No, no, not here. Not like this. There must be some other way. Later tonight, Ernie. After the movies. Hamburgers. She'll get hungry for hamburgers. She's bound to. The waiter will ask her how she wants them. That'll give you the clue. And then, when she's asleep, <laughs> and they'll find her in her bed. <laughs> the perfect crime. Don't you see, Ernie? Hamburger. frightened girl reliving a dream that was more terrible than any reality. A dream that could even become more terrible as the clock on the mantel takes on and the hands draw closer to 12 o'clock and murder at midnight. <laughs> And now back to Murder at Midnight and Nightmare. Well, let's hear the rest of this dream of yours, Helen. What happened after that? Well, it was after that that it really got bad. It was so crazy, but so real. I don't know what stopped you, Ernie, kept you from killing me then, but you didn't. And still, I knew you were going to. You dragged me out into the street and then into a movie and then out again. And I looked at you and you were crying. 
because you'd made up your mind to finish me off when we got home. You should have let me write that book, Helen. You should have. And I kept crying, I love you, Ernie. Don't kill me. Please don't kill me tonight. But I've got to. I've got to. I pity you, but I've got to. And you pulled me along through the streets again. I was terrified. And then I saw a policeman and I cried to him, officer! Yes? What is it, lady? Please save me. My husband here wants to kill me. Oh, who wants to kill you? Eh? <laughs> Why, that's a crime. <laughs> a felony. Oh, why are you joking? Don't joke about it. Do something, please. I'm frightened to death. Don't pay any attention to her, officer. She's dreaming. I'm not. Don't believe him. You have to wait till I go to sleep tonight. And then as soon as I fall asleep... Oh, come gonna... now, lady. He wouldn't do it to you in your sleep. Why, you're cute. Not in her sleep now, would you, mister? Of course not, officer. Not in her sleep. As a matter of fact, we're stopping off first for a hamburger. She's hungry. No, 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 I'm not. I mean, I am, but I don't dare. I'm starving, but I don't dare. He's just waiting for me to order one, officer, to see what I'll say. And then he'll take me home and kill me. Oh, 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 oh. lady, stop. Sure, and you're breaking me hard. <laughs> Come along, dear. No, no, officer, please protect me. Don't let him take me, please. Come along, I say, darling. And then we were in the little lunchroom in our neighborhood, around the corner from our house, sitting on stools. The counterman came over to us. He winked at you, Ernie, and you winked back at him, and he said... Evening, folks. What do you have? You looked at me, but I shook my head. I shook my head and the tears were streaming down my face. I tell you what, Joe, make it two hamburgers. <laughs> right. Rare, medium, or well? Medium, Joe. Make mine medium. Right. And the little lady? How do you have yours, Helen? How do you like yours? <laughs> make hers medium, too. Two hamburgers, medium. Two medium, coming out. And what do you have on them, folks? Relish or onion? Relish. Make mine with relish. Right. And the little lady? The man's talking to you, Helen. How'll you have yours? Answer him, I say. Answer him. This is it. How'll you have yours? Well, I won't tell him. If I do, you'll know. You'll know how to do it. So I won't tell him. I won't. The next thing I dreamt, we were home again. Sitting in the parlor. Everything exactly the same, Ernie. Just like tonight before we went to bed. But in my dream, I was sitting paralyzed in a cold sweat, waiting for the word. The word from you that meant my death. Oh, well, Butch, I guess we better hit the hay. What do you say? What do you say, darling? No, uh, wait, I, uh, Ernie, did I tell that counterman how I wanted my hamburgers, sir? Did of course, I... dear. What did I say? I can't seem to remember. <laughs> I forget to come along to bed. No, no, I don't want to go to bed yet. Please don't make me go to bed. I'm scared. Helen. <laughs> come to bed, darling. Like a good little girl. Hmm? We went to bed. And then you said... And now, lights out, eh? I tried to think of everything I knew to keep awake. I wondered whether I ought to count to a hundred or whether counting would put me to sleep. I tried not to count, but I felt myself getting sleepier and sleepier. Sleep, honey? I heard, but I pretended not to. I fought to keep my eyes open. I knew I would die if I closed them. Asleep, Butch? I didn't answer. I couldn't if I wanted to. I was so scared. And then pretty soon I heard you stirring ever so quietly. And in a moment you were leaning over me. Oh, Ernie, I know it was just a dream, but it was so real. And there was hatred in your eyes and there was a pillow in your hand and I knew you were going to do it right then. And I... <laughs> Oh, 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 that's a beaut, that's a honey. Oh, my aching back. Darling, when you have a nightmare, you sure do it up golden brown and creepy. Wasn't it crazy? Oh, darling, wasn't it mad? Oh, oh, oh wait till I tell it around the office tomorrow. Oh, oh, oh.
Oh, this is too good, kid. But Ernie, how <laughs> does a person have a horrible dream like that? What does it mean? Oh, it's a cinch. I'll interpret it for you. And without a dream book, too. Will? Well, go on then, Ernie. Tell me. Okay, then here it is. First of all, a dream always means the opposite, right? You ever hear that? Yes, I have. That's right, it does. Which means I must love you simply awful. Granted? <laughs> Granted, silly. But goodness, what about the rest of it? Easiest thing in the world. Darling, where'd we go tonight? To a movie. What kind of a movie? It was a, a murder story. <gasps> Gee, that's right. Do you think that was... Now, don't interrupt, Butch. Who was starring in the movie? Betty Davis. Repeat the first name. Betty. And the villainous in the dream, my secret love, the girl we met last summer, was also Betty. Betty Daniels. Oh! Well, that gave you Betty on the brain when you went to sleep tonight, and movies, and murder, and those hamburgers you did stop to eat after the show wrapped up the whole sequence. And no wonder, they're still lying on my stomach, too. <laughs> well, what was the pillow doing in it? Sweetness and light, what were you talking about early this evening? That chore you intend to get after someday? Oh, yes, I've got to stuff the pillows. They're caved in the way the feathers have come up. Right, that's your pillow you had on the brain, which uh, which brings me back to the hamburgers. Yes, I was going to ask you, I mean, that nonsense of how did I want my hamburgers, what did all that mean for heaven's sake? Precious, how did you order your hamburgers down tonight? Remember? No, I can't recall. Oh, of course you can. Think now. How do you almost always order your hamburgers? Smothered in onions. Oh, Ernie, of course. Smothered in onions, smothered pillow, smothered with a pillow. Yes, Jack. Oh, my heaven's sakes alive. Oh, my gosh, so that was <laughs> Oh, if that doesn't speak. Ernie, that was wonderful. Really? The way you did that figured that all out. I think you'd make a terrific detective. Yeah, so I'm a police reporter. Close enough. <laughs> Darling... It's made me think so. But maybe I have been a little bit so. What do you mean? Well, that book you always wanted to write. Maybe I ought to, to let you give up your job and try. Oh, and have us both starve? Nuts. Anyway, in my sane moments, Helen, I've always known the truth. I'm no writer. If I had it in me, it would have come out of me. Job or no job. I could go back to work again, you know. I could take up nursing again. It was pretty hard, no, but no, I... No, 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 nonsense. It won't happen. Don't say any more about it, and that's fine. Swell guy, though, Butch. So offered to him. Oh, there was one thing more, Ernie. Hmm? Yeah? What do you suppose that was... That was all that about July 15th, about you're forgetting July 15th. What did that mean, you know? Yeah. Don't you? No, I can't. It does seem familiar, but I can't seem to... Where are you going? Get something out of my wallet. Wait a minute. What's the date of our anniversary, Alan? Hmm? Uh, July 15th, of course. Tomorrow. But was that... Right. You've had that on the brain, too. Oh! Here. A little present for you, darling. Oh, what on earth? <gasps> Tickets. Two railroad tickets. To Montreal. Right again. We're taking an anniversary trip. I wanted to surprise you when you woke up, but... Well, anyway, happy anniversary, baby. Oh, Ernie. Oh, you great big precious darling. How can I ever... You didn't forget. You always did before, but this time you didn't. Oh, Ernie, I just can't forget it. First that dream and then finding out that it did me just the opposite. No, 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 Helen, don't. It's don't. so sweet of you. I'm so thrilled. Montreal, where we had our honeymoon and you haven't forgotten. Oh, Ernie, I I do hope I've been a good wife to you. And if there's anything I ever... I mean, if you want me to, I can always change. Now, darling, wouldn't want you any different for the world. I want you to stay just the same sweet little girl I married. And now, let's get some shut-eye, huh? Lights out? All right. But I'm going to put the tickets right here under the pillow. And have a happy dream for a change. Ah. Good night, Bruce. You haven't kissed me? Mm. Good night, dear.
sleep dying. Darling, are you asleep? Hello? Ernie? You shouldn't have phoned before, Betty. She was still awake. I had to know. Is, is it done? Not yet. You got the tickets? Yes. It has to be tonight. You promised. I know. Is she asleep now? Yes. Just gone off. Then what are you waiting for? Nothing. I'll do it now. Right now. As soon as I hang up. Putting on the phone. Bernie turns, picks the pillow off his bed. As the clock finishes striking twelve. Murder! At midnight! Remember to be with us again when death appears out of the darkness, wearing the face of one you know, and the clock strike twelve for... Murder at midnight. The part of Helen was played by Elspeth Eric. Walter Vaughn was Ernie. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader.